politician, elected official. I'm up here trying to count all the other elected officials in the room so I don't miss anybody. Um, well, I want to welcome everybody to a day that uh, I think many of us, but certainly I have been looking forward to for uh, quite some time. Um, and you'll just have to ignore this thing, because I am. Um, <laughs> Uh, so anyway, um, this is the uh, dedication today of the long-awaited Michael J. Dorian building. And um, before we get started, I am going to uh, call uh, Monsignor John Cody up to the podium, and we're going to have a benediction, or an invocation, I apologize. Monsignor, come on up. My association with the, I was just talking to Betsy, and my association with the Dorian family goes back almost 50 years. For my first assignment at good old St. Timothy's, okay? And both you and Mike and their families belong there, and we've been friends ever since. So let us begin this dedication ceremony with a prayer. Let us pray. Good and merciful God. We gather here today to dedicate this wonderful Franklin County building in memory of Michael J. Dorian, a much respected and admired former county commissioner. It's only fitting that we do this as Mike was an outstanding, generous, honest, and much loved and admired public servant. His time as county commissioner was marked by much growth, development, and generous service. Known especially for his integrity, and his humility and his leadership, his presence and that of his wife, Mary, are greatly missed, not only by their family members, but also by the countless friends and citizens they've known throughout the years, whose lives Michael touched and Mary touched and helped over the long years of his storied career. May all who serve in this building be continually inspired by Mike's example of honest and generous public service. May all of us who knew and loved him always remember and celebrate the friendship and memory of Mike, whose life of faith, service, and love of family will always be treasured by all of us and all those who walk through the doors of this county building, dedicated to his memory today. We thank you, God for the exemplary life of Michael Dorian, and we pray that he and his beloved wife Mary and all his siblings rest in peace and in the joy that only God can give to those who love and serve both God and neighbor. Amen. Thank you, Monsignor. So before we get, get started, um, oh, I'm sorry, but no, we, we have one other thing we need to do. We have the Pledge of Allegiance uh, this morning by um, Ann Lanzati's son and Michael Dorian's grandson, Liam Lanzati. Liam, do you want to come on up? Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, or God individual with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Liam. Liam's an Eagle Scout, so thank you. Um, <clears throat> we have with us this morning uh, a number of uh, public and elected officials, uh, people that I would like to recognize. Um, can't do any of this without my colleagues uh, here at the County Commission. Uh, we have Commissioner Erica Crowley, president of the Board of Commissioners, in the back of the room. Um, Commissioner Boyce is not here with us today. He's, I believe he's out of town, um, but they help do everything here with me at the county uh, these days, and so appreciate Commissioner Crowley being here. We also have with us today uh, our former city auditor, Hugh Dorian. Uh, Hugh. <clears throat> We also have Judge Julia Dorian, the Court of Appeals. <laughs> Judge Eileen Paley, the Municipal Court. Former County Commissioner, 
uh, and former Franklin County Chairwoman Fran Ryan is with us. Um, we have some folks representing Auditor or uh, Prosecutor Tyak, Ed Leonard and uh, Mike Rankin are both here. I don't know if uh, um, Prosecutor Tyak is here yet, but they're both here. <coughs> and in a little while, we're going to hear from my former colleague, uh, Commissioner Paula Brooks. Um, <coughs> but before we. Uh, call a couple of other folks up. I wanted to say a few words myself. Um, everybody made a big deal out of me, uh, you know, wanting to do this and naming this building after uh, Commissioner Dorian. But it was pretty easy decision um, because I was explaining to uh, Mike's daughter earlier that, you know, when I got elected to office um, way back when, my dad gave me some advice, and that was uh, to pattern my try to pattern my career after a guy like Mike Dorian and his brother Hugh. And so, you know, got, Mike was somebody who was concerned about, uh, I learned this from Mike Curtin, <clears throat> it was concerned about, I'm sorry, I learned this from Hugh Dorian, learned, concerned himself about the courthouse complex, <clears throat> that this complex had been neglected by his predecessors <clears throat> before his tenure, and it was left uh, he was left with quite a, de uh, quite a bit to deal with when he took office, and he found it really important um, to leave um, this complex in a better situation than, when he, that, than he had found when he got here. He built this building. He and his, his colleagues built the building that we're naming after him today. He also was very cons concerned about those who were less fortunate than him, um, and those that were the most in need in the community. He was responsible with others, including the bishop at the time, for creating the community shelter board. Um, and, you know, that is one of the organizations that we spend a great deal of money on and have for the entire time that I've been a county commissioner um, because we all, in his follow in his footsteps, believe that, that funding organizations that support those that are the most in need in this community um, are, you know, is something that is tremendously important. Mike was a builder by trade, but he also, that was also how he conducted himself as a county commissioner. He built bridges through relationships, he built consensus, he built teams here at the courthouse, and he built buildings. Um, he built this building, he built he rebuilt, rebuilt Frank, uh, what was known at the time as Franklin County Stadium, something I knew a little bit about as a, and as Mike, or his son Joe, I'm sure, knew about, because as kids, uh, Catholic school kids, that was our home field for a long time. We played a lot of football games there, a lot of baseball games there growing up. I have some pictures in my office that people have given me about playing, playing ball games there as kids. Um, and eventually became known as Cooper Stadium after Harold Cooper, his, his colleague. So, and for a time, as a young man, I worked for, for the political class of the time <clears throat> and those that followed as somebody who did the right thing for the right reasons. He never chose what was inappropriate. He never chose what was politically expedient. Mike Dorian was an example for every politician yesterday and today. And these days, I wish we had a lot more people like him. When I got elected to office, my dad, like I said, held up Mike and Hugh Dorian as examples of men that I should aspire to be like as an elected official. And I've tried to never forget that. So now, uh, I would like to bring up my former colleague, Paula Brooks, who I served with for eight years on the, on the Down County Commission and is a good friend of the Dorian family. First, thank you, my friend, Commissioner John O'Grady, for that kind introduction. And it's wonderful to see Commissioner Erica Crawley here, too. She is also doing a great job as a county commissioner, and I think we should give them both a round of applause. It's a hard job.
and to dear friends, the incredible Monsignor Cody, and our friend and uh, former state representative, the honorable Mike Curtin, it is a privilege to share this time with you today. And finally, my deep regards to Joe Dorian. I'm hitting on the speakers here. <laughs> Acting as family spokesperson today. Your father is watching all of you from above, Joe. As I am sure you know, uh, and I would say on heavenly falcon's wings. <laughs> Today is a day that really makes me happy. What an honor it is to be here with family, friends, colleagues of Commissioner Michael J. Dorian to celebrate a fitting tribute to him. Mike was commissioner, the director, to sell the husband, the dad, brother, son, uncle, and everyone's friend and most importantly, public servant. Commissioner Dorian worked hard, cared about everyone from the homeless, as John mentioned, the disabled, to the workers and all residents he served. He was kind, quietly effective, and he loved his family to the moon and back, every single one of you. Some, like me, were fortunate to also call him a mentor. He opened doors for many of us and expected nothing in return except that we work hard, care, and honestly invest ourselves on behalf of the people of Franklin County and Ohio. He had a quiet, jovial sense of humor, a bit like some of the newest Dorian generations, uh, I might add. You could walk down the hall when he was the Ohio Building Authority Director, and he would always welcome you as if you were his only appointment that day. Yeah, right. <laughs> but he was always present when you were there with him. He listened intently and always kindly suggesting, well, Paula, maybe you should do it this way. And as John said, we need more of those leaders today. So to his grandchildren, Liam, Patrick, Luke, Emily, Katie, Michael, Riley, Mason, Laney, and now a great grandchild, Orfeo, the newest generation, you have great, big shoes of your grandfather's, Michael J. Dorian, to fill. They were well-worn shoes of kindness, solid work ethic, and non-judgmental civic morality. Above all, those shoes carried a man of love and caring for all people, and especially for friends and you, his family. I am betting those figurative shoes of Commissioner Mike Dorian's are going to take you, his grand and great-grandchildren, to rewarding places in your lives. And in your own ways, you'll pay it forward, just as your grandfather did, all the while honoring his legacy by being kind, humble, and full of a bit of Irish mirth and wit. Commissioner Dorian once made a very insignificant female state employee in her 20s profoundly grateful. He called her boss and asked that she come meet at his office right over there on High Street. It was a very important matter, she was told. Frankly, she thought a thorny issue awaited. You know, one of those between the state and the county, you know, when you never know what might arise. Commissioner Dorian's very serious yet polite and efficient staff ushered her into his big front office there on High Street. Aha, she thought, as she found him sitting behind the front desk, the front desk thing, you know, the power thing. This must be trouble. At first, the commissioner was very solemn and serious. He asked her to, to take a seat, though. I thought, oh, I gave a story away. <laughs> That was a good sign, she thought. Then he smiled, made her at ease, and asked about her Eastern Ohio home area roots. Once he got that twinkle that Mike Doran could get in his eye, she knew that they had common ground. And all here who perhaps might hail from those hard scrabble roots, Fran, right, <laughs> Mr. Doran, in Eastern Ohio, you know what I mean. So now probably, you've guessed, of course, it was me. The commissioner made me feel so comfortable. That's what I remember in that moment. 
and many in the audience today, I'm sure you remember feeling uh, Don Brown very comfortable, uh, Scott Solzman, as co-workers. Um, he offered me uh, an appointment to a very important board. It, it wasn't at all the meeting I expected. And it was the Developmental Disabilities Board, MRDD it was called back then. He pointed out to me that this board required a lot of work, yes it did, <laughs> And it carried a very heavy responsibility because it performs with levy funds. So um, I think he also knew that such an important role would shape me in many ways, not the least of which was to care about those most in need, as Mike did. That trust and experience he gave me left an indelible mark on my heart, continuing throughout my career and my very own uh, later terms as county commissioner when I was privileged again to work with the De Developmental Disabilities Board. That he would entrust me with such a tremendously important role was overwhelming to me at that time. I often came back to that thought of Michael Dorian's trust, for example, when we were challenged by a vote to increase money for affordable housing. It was not a popular vote, it was a tough one, right? <laughs> uh, or a vote to support the environmental uh, issues, or a vote to support our new ballpark, which makes so many families happy. That was a tough one, too. And of course, I came back to that trust requirement when I was later called upon to make appointments. It was truly a big deal to feel those bonds of trust. It was an honor to step into his shoes for a few short years as a county commissioner and thanks to Ann to display Commissioner Dorian's Franklin County flag in my office for that term. And now, the baton has been passed to others, yet Commissioner Dorian's legacy survives. His flag resides on family loan uh, in the office of his niece, Julia Dorian, Judge Julia, Julia Dorian, and he lives on in you, Julia. Through the years after that appointment, the Dorian family became my family. Anne became a dear personal friend and a sister from another mother to me. <laughs> Thank you for your love and loyalty, Anne. I also enjoyed the brilliance of Commissioner Dorian's artist wife, Mary, whose paintings brought forth passion and regard for beauty. Her, may her memory be eternal and how Mike Dorian would be proud of all of his children's accomplishments. Banking, real estate, business, and construction. All of the siblings, Joe, Michael, Beth, and Ann, you have made him incredibly proud. His love for brother, Mr. Hugh Dorian, was legendary, as they both worked and strived to make Columbus a better place. Today, Commissioner Michael J. Dorian is fittingly acknowledged by the Franklin County Commissioners through this building dedication. He is also fittingly acknowledged when action is taken to humbly serve the residents of Franklin County, regardless of their station in life. Monsignor, I would guess that the good Lord has appointed his angel, Michael, to forever watch over our dear county and all of its people. To dear family, Anne, Michael, Joe, Beth, and your wonderful spouses, and all of the next generations earlier named, please know that Mike Dorian led with love, compassion, service, and hard work, and his legacy lives on in each and every one of you. Let us forever remember Franklin County Commissioner Michael J. Dorian, a servant leader of the people. Thank you for having me today. Thank you, Paula. Um, before I call up our next speaker, I want to acknowledge a couple of folks who've also joined us today. We have with us uh, Appeals Court Judge Mike Mennell. We also have with us a, a few municipal court judges, Judge Cynthia Ebner and Judge, and Judge Mark Hummer. 
And I think I got everybody. I'd now like to call up to the uh, podium uh, Michael Curtin, if I may. Mike is formerly uh, all things, all things with the Columbus Dispatch for what, 127 years? <coughs> uh, reporter, reporter. Mike also covered Mr. Dorian here at Franklin County at the Franklin County Courthouse. Mike became uh, the editor of the Columbus Dispatch for a number of years, and then also was state representative Mike Curtin. So, if you would please join us, Mike. Thank you, Commissioner. Good morning. Members of the Dorian family, I'm grateful for the opportunity to share a few facts, uh, memories, and thoughts about your father, grandfather, brother. Commissioners Boyce, Crowley, O'Grady, thank you for a well-informed decision to name a Hall of Justice for a man who worked for justice. Even in, and especially in, areas that were not popular causes at the time, areas that cost him politically. When Mike Dorian died 30, year, 30 years ago this week, June of 1992, too early at age 61, the dispatch headline on his news obit read, Michael Dorian, shaper of city skyline. The story said he helped change the Columbus skyline as much as any other public official ever had. That was accurate. He was a builder of the first order. The obit spoke of his lead role among commissioners in building the Hall of Justice and Municipal Courts building, building a 1,000 car parking garage, a human services headquarters, additions to the Alumcrest nursing home, schools for the mentally retarded, two mental health institutions, the county's animal shelter, jails, and more and more. The story spoke of his partnership with fellow commissioner Harold Cooper in rebuilding Cooper Stadium and returning professional baseball to Columbus. It spoke of his directorship of the Ohio Building Authority for nearly six years, during which he supervised the construction of state and county buildings throughout Ohio, including the Rice Center at 77 South High Street. Mike Dorian most certainly was a builder and from a young age. After graduating in 1948 at the top of his class from Holy Family High School, he became a construction worker by day and a student by night. He studied accounting at Franklin University, then located in the downtown YMCA. His career in construction began as a masonry contractor, helping build homes on the west side, many near St. Mary Magdalene Parish. Before long, Uncle Sam called. Drafted in 1950, Mike reported to the Army in March 1951. He asked to stay in construction. So before long, he was building bridges with fellow soldiers in an armored engineer's unit. Discharged from the Army in March of 1953, Mike enrolled in accounting at Ohio State and resumed working in residential construction with the J.B. Browning Company. The owner soon retired, so Mike bought the company for $2,000, and at age 24 was building houses on his own. He met Mary Weber while she was a student at St. Mary of the Springs. They married in 1956, and Mike built the home near Riverside Hospital where they raised four children, Ann, Beth, Michael, and Joe. He worked in John F. Kennedy's presidential campaign in 1960, then in Jack Sensenbrenner's 1963 campaign for Columbus mayor. Sensenbrenner won, and Mike was appointed assistant safety director to supervise the building regulation and housing divisions. Mike remained with the city until he and Harold Cooper were elected county commissioners in November of 1968, the first of four successful elections for them as a team. I can remember how many people around Franklin County were confused by who this Cooper Dorian guy was. <laughs> they worked for them, worked for four consecutive elections. Besides all the previously mentioned building projects, uh, Mike Dorian and Harold Cooper were founders, active partners in the founding of CODA, 
the Rickenbacker Port Authority, a new sanitary landfill, and the expansion of Veterans Memorial. No question Mike Dorian was a builder of the first order. The headline on his obit, Shaper of City Skyline, was on target. But that headline and that obit captured only part of the man. They did not capture his work for justice, which is the most important reason for dedicating this Hall of Justice in his memory. Mike Doring was a leader in the cause of building a more just civic order in Columbus, Franklin County, and Central Ohio. He was an active partner in the founding in 1980 of the Mid-Ohio Food Bank and in the Operation Feed Campaign of 1982 to ensure that the food bank could fulfill its mission. When Mike ran for Columbus mayor in 1983, neither the city nor the county had a plan for dealing with a growing homeless population. At the time, it was not a popular cause. The National Recession of 1981 and 82, then the worst recession since the Great Depression, had hit Ohio hard. Many people lost jobs. Manufacturing jobs had been decimated. For three straight years, inflation outpaced median family incomes. A serious, comprehensive approach to sheltering the homeless would cost money at an inopportune time. Only one candidate in that mayor's race spoke for the homeless. Three weeks before the election, Three weeks before the election at a candidate forum, Mike said, Lord knows they don't vote, but they deserve a place on this earth as much as you or I. Mike lost a very close mayor's race. Then he kept on working as part of a coalition that eventually led to the creation of what we now know as the Community Shelter Board. Mike Doring was a leader in making sure that the system we have in place now that we take for granted got off the ground when it was a very, very unpopular thing to do. Similarly, in 1983, Columbus had no laws, no policies prohibiting job discrimination against gays. It was not uncommon for gays to be denied employment because of their sexual orientation. Only one candidate in that 1983 mayor's race pledged to sign a city ordinance banning job discrimination on the basis of one's sexual orientation. This was a rather unpopular position in 1983. Mike said, a matter of weeks before the election, quote, we must give attention to people in need. Public officials must have the courage to stand up and take unpopular positions. If we don't stand up, who will? When you start excluding people, who is next? Close quote. Commissioners Boyce, Crowley, O'Grady, the spirit of Mike Doring is alive and well in the work that you have championed and continue to champion on behalf of the less advantaged, the less fortunate, the marginalized. Mike Dorian's moral compass was firm and true. Thank you for allowing me to be part, not just of the dedication of a building, but our rededication to a timeless principle. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> Appreciate it. Um, before I call up uh, Joe Dorian to speak on behalf of the family, I have one thing I'd like to do if I could. I'd like to call up uh, my good friend, good friend of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners, good friend of this community, <clears throat> good friend of the, I think, of the Dorian family, Senator Herschel Craig. Little, little surprise addition, little surprise addition to the uh, agenda today. Good morning. Good morning. I better be good. I see Bond Senior Cody is sitting right up there, so I better be good. But uh, the book of Micah lifts this query. 
it raises this interrogative. What does the Lord require of thee? The word comes back to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before the Lord. What a privilege it is for me to be here today. Certainly uh, for Michael Dorian and all that he has meant. I talked to uh, Mr. O'Grady this morning. Uh, I apologize for my lateness, but I wanted to be here myself to tell you how much this Dorian family has meant to me. And that's not hyperbole. Um, besides this man standing over here, John O'Grady, with whom I love with all of my heart, dear friend, and I certainly owe to all of the commissioners, a president of the commission and Commissioner Boyce, love them all. But this family is part of my being. Uh, I think, and I'm going to read, I won't read this uh, resolution in its entirety, but I certainly will read some portion of it. Uh, but this man sitting here, certainly uh, Michael Dorian and his enormous impact on this city, really state and nation. But Hugh Dorian, I would sit in Mr. Dorian's office many days when I was struggling with issues and trying to determine, I remember in 08 when our city had a downturn, and it's because of this man, Hugh Dorian, uh, made all the difference. We've had a AAA bond rating as long as I can remember. But his integrity, this family's uh, integrity and character uh, has meant so much in my life. And I hope to God that I continue to model uh, the service that Michael Dorian and Hugh Dorian and this family and Judge Dorian has meant so much to all of us. So let me read just a portion of this resolution from the 134th General Assembly. As a member of the Senate of the 134th General Assembly of Ohio, I'm pleased to congratulate the Franklin County Commissioners in the City of Columbus on the dedication of the Michael J. Dorian Judicial Service Building on June the 7th, 2022, celebrating a celebration of the auspicious occasion. This auspicious uh, event is a fitting tribute to the Franklin County Commissioners and the City of Columbus for investing their time and effort to pay tribute to local heroes such as the late Michael J. Dorian for his illustrious public service record. Indeed, this new facility convincingly demonstrates how much we can accomplish by a group of conscientious people with clear objectives and firm resolve, and I applaud their tremendous efforts. All of those associated are truly uh, admirable for their ongoing uh, support and dedication to others. Thus, with a genuine pleasure, we applaud the Franklin County Commissioners in the City of Columbus on the dedication of Michael J. Dorian Judicial Service Building and extend best wishes for ongoing su success. And I will just leave you with the words of Dr. King and always I'm reminded of his word. He says, I only have a minute. Only 60 seconds in it forced upon me. Can't refuse it. Didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to me to use it. I must suffer if I lose it. Give account if I abuse it. But a tiny, tiny little minute, but eternity is in it. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Can't, uh, can't, can't refuse him, can't deny him, can't keep him away, don't want to, not going to, not going to. So I would like to call up to the podium now uh, Joe Dorian, youngest member of the family, to uh, youngest member of Mike's immediate family, to give remarks on behalf of uh, the family. Thanks for, thanks for putting me at the end of this, uh, this, I can't follow all of these great speakers. I mean, well, this is... I used to watch you at the comedy club, but I know yeah. you'll do just fine. Is there, is there anybody just fine. else you want to bring up, perhaps? <laughs> to add to, you'll do just fine. The, uh, you'll do just fine. Thank you. You, 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 you volunteered for this, right? I did. I did. I did. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I wrote something, and I'm going to read it, but um, I'd first of all like to, to thank on behalf of my whole family, especially my brothers and sisters. Um, you know, uh, on account of our children, 
because, you know, I've written stuff, my sister helped me write this, but to hear all of these great speakers uh, talk about the things that my father um, uh, has done, that my family, including my Uncle Hugh, I mean, um, that the family has done for this community has been very, very important because I think it's difficult for us to uh, kind of help our children understand the legacy that, um, that they are part of. Um, and I know that, uh, uh, you know, especially listening to all the great speakers that we've had today, um, and Mr. Curtin kind of going through, you, you basically, I should just cross off all the different things that I mentioned here. Uh, uh, next time I need to hire you to, to, to write my uh, speech for me. Um, but for them to hear, for our children to hear the things that, um, that this family uh, has done uh, for this community and the importance of public service, uh, that was, to be quite honest, the, the theme that um, kind of has gone through every single one of these speeches. I remember my dad, he used to give me a ride to, to school every day. Um, and depending on uh, what my grades were like at the time, it could be either a very morose, slow drive, or it could be one that was, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, of uh, uh, jovial. And I always remember once in, when my dad was running for mayor in 83, I, I mentioned to somebody, and he overheard me, uh, calling him a politician. And he, on the ride to work, or to school, he made a very, very strong point of letting me understand that he was only a politician one day every four years, and that every other day of the year, uh, including that day, he was a public servant. And as I look back as I was writing this, I remembered, you know, sometimes when you look back, you see, um, in hindsight, the importance of the little moments. You know, there's, I, I'm a firm believer there's no such thing as coincidence in this world. It's just opportunities that are either missed, but they will be oftentimes offered again. Uh, uh, so that you can have an impact, so that you can make connection and relationship. And that's something I think that my father took very seriously, was the importance of each and, each and every one of those opportunities to build relationship. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and jump in. Oh, by the way, uh, I want to let you know that the only thing that I could find that I wore uh, when I did this same talk 30 years ago that would still fit was my tie. So my mom actually bought that. So those of you who know my mom are not surprised that it's kind of this crazy time. So anyways, good morning. Um, what a wonderful opportunity that we have today to remember a dedicated public servant through the naming of this beautiful building, one that my father actually had a hand in bringing about. I'd like to start by taking a quick moment to thank all those who have made this entirely possible, including Commissioners O'Grady, uh, Kevin Boyce, and Acting President of the Board, um, Erica Crawley. On behalf of my family, we'd like to personally thank you all for your care and concern throughout this whole process. We'd also like to thank all who have joined us today, both in person and online, including family, friends, and many former colleagues and peers that have been able to, to join us today for this uh, occasion. While many of you here are familiar with my father, there are many of you who are not aware of the nature of this compassionate and caring man and the impact of his dedicated public service. Michael Dorian was a man of great character and integrity, someone who my mother described in her speech at the dedication of Dorian Commons 30 years ago as an unassuming man who never courted appreciation or recognition for all of his many accomplishments. It was more important to him that the people of Central Ohio were well served. Being recognized and credited for his many accomplishments was not important at all to my father. In fact, the secret to his success came through his ability to create strong and trusting working relationships with people from both sides of the fence, regardless of what that fence was made of. And when I wrote this next line, this one, I remembered um, the individual telling me this. I won't mention who it is, but this came back like a freight train. He was, as one person once told me, a builder of bridges and not of dams. That kind of strikes me. With that being said, as a proud son, I'd like to share with you some of Mike Dorian's enduring accomplishments uh, that have positively impacted Central Ohio even today. During his career as both commissioner and later as director of the Ohio Building Authority, my father was directly involved in the building of much of today's downtown skyline, including the Franklin County Administration Building, the Hall of Justice that we're dedicating today to his memory, the Franklin County Jail, the Municipal Court Building, 
and the Verne Rife Tower, amongst other things. He also, along with his dear friend and fellow commissioner, Harold Cooper, was responsible for bringing professional baseball, aka the Columbus Clippers, back to our city in 1977. Perhaps even more important, on the social front, my father was committed to equal rights for all people, regardless of their background, beliefs, ethnicity, race, or sexual orientation. Through his tenure as county commissioner, my father led initiatives that created jobs, kept taxes low, and brought federal funds into our community for needed services and improvements that have benefited us, uh, us all. In the 1983 Citizen Journal, remember, Mike, there used to be another paper here? <clears throat> In a 1983 Citizen Journal editorial endorsing my father for Columbus mayor, they noted that Dorian always had taken an active approach in his dedication to Central Ohio and had spearheaded programs that directly impacted the plight of the elderly, homeless, working mothers and foster parents, and that he almost single-handedly established Columbus's first open shelter. They mentioned that Dorian would also ban employment discrimination against gays, and lesbians at the city, something with which his uh, mayoral campaign opponent of the time would not even recognize as an issue. Remember, folks, this was 30 years ago. Finally, the CJA article went on to say that Dorian's record on civil rights and affirmative action is one that will stand against any, that under his leadership, minority employees made up 43% of the positions in the commissioner's office, and finally noting that my father had worked tirelessly with black community leaders during the civil rights struggles of the 60s. I found out later that he actually marked, marched with Dr. King at, at uh, Selma, and that he had continued to do this tireless work throughout his career. What many people might not know also was that my father was as funny as he was hardworking, and as much of a family man as he was a problem solver and deal maker. I can speak for those of us who were as uh, Julie was there and my brothers and sisters, um, uh, and Uncle Hugh actually fought off the bear. Uh, we used to take trips uh, every year to uh, 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 all of the extended Dorian family to, uh, to state parks. And one of those memories that I have as a child is uh, watching my Uncle Hugh go out and fight this, this man in a bear costume who was pretending to break in, had all of his kids screaming. And, and Uncle Hugh went out and got into fisticuffs with this bear and that bear was my father. <laughs> and he denied it and denied it and denied it until I found that bear costume in the closet at that state park. So while he was not flashy or attention seeking, he served the people of Franklin County and Ohio with the entirety of his heart and of his soul. And we are so grateful once again to Franklin County for their recognition of this man who so dearly loved this community that he called home. Thank you very much. Well done, Joe, well done. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, it's turned out much better than I thought it was gonna. Everybody did such a great job. Um, could I ask, I've been thinking about this the whole time we've been doing this, can I ask uh, those who can, if the Dorian family would please stand? Those who can. Thank you. Thank you to all of you for all your years of service because you know it, it, it's not just Mike, it's not just you, it's not just Julie uh, that's been serving this community for uh, through public service for all of these years. Uh, it's not, not just those whose names have been on the ballot, it's been all of you. So thank you for all of your dedication, thank you for all of your commitment to this community. Um, you know, uh, there are some of us who don't think that being a public servant's a bad thing. There are some of us who don't think that being a career public servant is a bad thing. Uh, you know, my parents, t my dad taught me, my parents taught me that other than being a member of the clergy, being, being dedicated, being a dedicated public servant is the most honorable thing that you could do with your life. And so thank you. Thank you for all that you've done 
for Franklin County, City of Columbus, and the residents of this community. Our, our, our motto at Franklin County is every resident, every day. And you guys, this family embodies that more so than anybody that I've ever known. And that's one of the reasons why your fathers and your brothers and your grandfather's name is going to be on this building from now on. So thank you. Um, so you'll see, I think outside, in the inside, but outside out here is one of the signs that will memorialize this is the Michael J. Dorian building. And you'll see through some of the photos that you see here and in the room next door will, are artist renderings of what they'll look like on the outside of the building once PFM gets them up, correct, Darla? So you'll be able to see them inside the room over here and here. And then also inside, Beth has brought a collection of uh, memorabilia, if you guys want to go inside and take a look at it, um, a memorabilia of, of uh, Mr. Dorian's that you can take a look at. Um, and uh, members of the um, Dorian family and the commissioners will be available for any one-on-one -on -one interviews that the media may have. And there is a reception that's uh, immediately following next door here in meeting room A for anybody that would like to join us. So thank you everybody for being here today. A wonderful morning. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. So thanks for being with us. Ha, 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 ha.